everyone. Today, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be talking to you about a question we have been asked hundreds of times, and that is all about how we receive mail and where we receive our mail at. So today I'm going to be talking about four major points. How we specifically receive our mail, what state we picked as our residency and why, the top three states people typically pick as residency when they're full-time RVers, and also I'm going to mention a little bit about mail forwarding services. Now just a disclaimer, I am not an expert on any of this. We don't have a mail forwarding service that we use, and we didn't pick the state that we reside in based on anything in particular, it was mostly just convenience. I'm gonna start with how we receive mail. Now, we're lucky. When we first decided we were gonna hit the road, we were talking with David's parents about mail forwarding services and vehicle registration and all that good stuff, and David's dad offered for us to have our mail sent here and to use their address as our permanent residence. That's awesome, that's super lucky, and if you have someone in your family that's willing to do that for you, that's awesome. Now, because our mail goes here and we don't actually, you know, receive it and we can't scan it online or anything like that, what um, David's dad does is he opens all of our mail, he takes pictures of anything that's important, and then he texts those pictures to us. If we receive anything important that we need to have in person, like vehicle registration or new licenses, he will send that to us via general delivery to a nearest post office to wherever we're staying of our choosing. Now when it comes to general delivery, the first thing I search for is which post office is closest to where we're camping to. And then I go online and I see if that post office in particular offers general delivery. If it does say online that that post office location offers general delivery, I will then call that location to double check, but also to confirm how long they're willing to hold the mail for us. And I found that typically it's somewhere between 15 and 30 days. 15 days for any mail that requires a signature upon delivery and 30 days for anything that does not. When calling a post office in a large city to double check that they offer general delivery, you're gonna wanna double check that that's not the only post office at that zip code that offers general delivery. Now we've come across a couple of problems, one where the post office we were told that our package was going to be at wasn't the one it actually arrived at and we had to drive across town to a different one. And then we've also had an issue where Something we ordered was shipped incorrectly. We ordered it two-day shipping and it was shipped standard, so by the time it arrived, we weren't there anymore. Um, luckily, those are the only two issues we've ever run into and they were really easy to resolve. The reason it's so important for you to figure out which post office your mail is going to be delivered at, especially in a big city that has more than one post office, is because when you send something via general delivery, where it says general delivery on the address line, it actually takes away the street address. So it's going to be sent to whatever post office is in the city, state, and zip code. And if there's more than one post office at that zip code, which sometimes happens, because it's happened to us in Las Vegas, then your package might be at one of two locations. Besides David's parents forwarding mail to us via general delivery and us sending packages to ourselves via general delivery, we've also actually used Amazon lockers. Now, Amazon offers this awesome thing called Amazon lockers. A lot of people call them Amazon boxes, but they're not typically located in small towns. They're located in big cities, which is really convenient for all kinds of people, not just full-time RVers, but people that live in houses that don't want their packages stolen off their porches if they're um, ordering from Amazon. And what it is is it's this big yellow locker, and uh, you'll have a package sent to that Amazon locker. Once it's been delivered, Amazon will send you a message either via text or email that has the locker location, the locker number, and the code that you need to get into it. Super convenient, very secure, and we love it. Those are the only two delivery services we have used so far, just general delivery via USPS and Amazon Locker. Now, I'm sure that there are other issues that other people may have run into when it comes to delivering things via UPS or FedEx, um, but we haven't run into that yet. And if anybody has run into that issue, please mention it in the comment section below. The second question I'm going to answer is, what did we pick as our state of residency as full-time RVers and why? We actually ended up picking Indiana as our state of residency, not because of any reason besides the fact that it was very convenient. Um, David was born and raised here. We both lived here. We owned a house in town when we had decided to full-time RV. And when we were bringing the idea up to David's parents, they offered for us to switch our address to their house and have all our mail come here. It's been super, great for us, we've had no issues with it, and we have no reason to change. A lot of people also have family that have offered this same thing to them, 
but if it's not something that you ha are that you have available to you i'm going to get into the next subject which is top three states that full-time RVers pick for their residency. Even though we chose Indiana as our state of residency, it's probably not what we would have chosen if our family hadn't offered to help us out. Now in my research, I found that there are typically three states full-timers pick for full-time residency, and that is South Dakota, Florida, and Texas. Now the reason you need a legal residence is for a few reasons. The main ones being driver's license, vehicle registration, voting, and taxes. South Dakota has no state income tax, no vehicle registrations are required, only has a 4% excise tax with no sales tax on vehicles. However, you must return to the state every five years to renew your driver's license. Florida also has no state income tax and also doesn't require annual vehicle inspections. And Florida also offers a pretty hefty discount on state parks in Florida, which is perfect for those who want to winter down there. Texas also has no state income tax, but they do require an annual vehicle inspection but you can register to vote by mail along with renewing your driver's license by mail, which is super convenient for those of you that aren't going to be there all the time. If we had to pick a state as full-time residency and we weren't offered the opportunity for David's parents to help us out, we probably would pick South Dakota simply because it fits us best. Now, before you make a big decision like that, you're gonna to wanna to research taxes, health insurance, and anything else that you're interested in while you're full-timing on the road. We don't use a professional mail forwarder to receive our mail, but we've done a ton of research and know that there are so many options out there. Most mail forwarding services offer the option to scan your mail and have it available to you online. Some even have their own apps to where you can manage how you receive your mail and what they do with it from your phone. There are plenty of mail forwarders that also offer one physical location in most states, not only in the United States, but also in Canada and abroad. In my research, I found that a lot of mail forwarding services vary pretty heavily in price. I've seen it from anywhere between $7 a month to $35 a month, and it can get pretty pricey if you also have your business placed through a mail forwarder. You can find almost every service you're looking for in a mail forwarder, including mail shredding, obviously mail and package forwarding. They can even send and deposit checks for you by mail if your bank allows it. Plenty of mail forwarders also allow you to use a street address of one of their locations as your permanent residency address as well. And all of the ones that I've researched have a lot of places in South Dakota, Texas, and Florida. There are so many options out there that I recommend doing a ton of research to make sure that you get the one that best fits you, read reviews, and even contact the mail forwarders to, to talk to someone and make sure that they're what fits what you need. After doing some quick research, for us, we would probably pick a virtual mailbox, something like iPostal One, Virtual Post Mail, or Anytime Mailbox. That is all I have for you today. Hopefully I've answered some of your burning questions, but I don't have as much experience as others do. And I hope that if you have more experience than I do, you leave your experience in the comment section below so that those that need more information can look down there for some helpful tips. I'll catch you guys later, bye. What is your tail going so fast for? <laughs> you getting it?